We are, of course, in the midst of a pandemic. We are, most people are under a uh, stay-at-home rule as much as is possible. And the houses of God today are closed. I've been saying for years that this day would come. And uh, I didn't expect it to happen this way in particular, but I knew this day was coming. The houses of God are closed, not because of persecution, but rather because of necessity. Any gathering, large gathering of people, any bringing together of numbers of people at this moment in time is dangerous uh, to the health of so many, especially those who are the most fragile, those who are the most uh, at risk in our communities today so we stay at home in an effort to protect one another as well as to protect ourselves amen but we're so glad today that you're able to come and worship with us here in dallas and i pray today that this service will be a tremendous blessing and encouragement and an inspiration to you Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer today. I've got to tell you, I'm under an awful heavy burden this afternoon. I believe with all my heart that the majority of Americans are oblivious and without understanding as to the tremendous uh, struggle that we are in, the huge, enormous battle that is waging right now, not on earth, but in heaven. Folks, I'm here to tell you, the Word of God is not a lie. It is the truth, and it is not a lie. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the Word of our God shall stand forever, and the Word of God warns us explicitly, tells us that in the last days evil men shall wax worse and worse. Yep. If you think that Adolf Hitler was evil, according to the word of God, in the last days we will see worse than Adolf Hitler. We will see worse than Mussolini. We will see worse than Lenin. Uh, we have not seen anything like them, but we are about to. And I fear that people in America today do not understand that our country literally, people, literally, is on the precipice. This is not hyperbole. I've been prophesying of this. I've been warning of this for many, many years. We are on the precipice of our Constitution being discarded. That is the plan that the Republicans have. They have had a plan. I preached a message on this way back during the very beginning to give you an idea of how long it's been. Way back at the very beginning of uh, George W. Bush's second term. You remember, Booby, I preached a message. We were in Mesquite at the time. And uh, I preached a message, the man that would be king. And I talked then about the fact that the Republican Party knows that they do not have a majority in America. They know for a fact that the majority of Americans are not conservatives. They most definitely are not uh, social conservatives. I have met any number of people in this country uh, driving for Uber and Lyft and over the years I've met all kinds of people who have told me, well, I am registered as a Republican. However, I am not a, a social conservative. I only identify as Republican because I believe in fiscal conservatism. 
There are many, many, many people in the Republican Party who are not anti-abortion, who are not anti-gay, who are not uh, involved in the culture wars of the right-wing religious right. Uh, and the Republican Party knows good and well <clears throat> that they do not have the consensus in this country that the majority of people in America do not agree fully with their platform and their ideals and their way of doing things. And this is why they engage in fraud. This is why they invade, uh, engage in criminality. This is why they engage in voter suppression. This is why they engage in voter intimidation. This is why they cheat in elections. This is why they work in harmony with foreign governments because they know that they do not have the majority in America. They know this. They know this. It's not just about who can get more people out to the polls. The fact is, if every Republican were to vote and every other person were to vote, uh, I say other person because it wouldn't be just Democrats, it would be Democrats as well as uh, independents and what have you, uh, the truth of the matter is a Republican would never get elected, and they know this. And I preached at the beginning of George W. Bush's second term, I preached that the GOP had a plan in motion, even at that time, to wrest permanent control of our government. They wanted to install what would amount to a figurehead dictator. Someone too stupid to know what they were doing, but someone who would simply do whatever was handed to them, or whatever they were told to do. And they are looking to establish an oligarchy. You see, the wealthy in this country are so consumed by a demon spirit of greed that there is not enough money in the planet to satisfy their greed. They want all of it. They want to reduce this nation to two classes, not rich and poor, because they're, the classes they want to reduce us to have nothing to do with how much money you have. The classes they want to reduce us to have to do with uh, status and service. They want those who serve and they want those who are served. Those are the two classes that the Republican Party has been trying to establish in America for decades now. And they have had a plan for two decades. They have had a plan to wrest permanent control of the government of the United States. Their ultimate end is civil war based on race because they want to weed out and thin out the population. And there are certain people in America, just like the Nazis, there are certain people in America that they want to reduce the numbers of, if not obliterate. And those are people of color, those are American Indians who keep interfering with their plans to drill for oil and to uh, lay down pipelines and things of this nature. Their plan is uh, Mexican Americans, Latin Americans, people coming from south of the border and the plan that they have folks has been in the works for years and years and when Donald Trump came along he was their ideal candidate because this man is so demonic he is so narcissistic he is so evil that he will do anything anything as long as he has promised wealth and power See, they're not, they're not promising Donald Trump that he'll have another four years in office. That's not how their little plan is working.
their plan is they're promising him that he will have a permanent place in the White House and that after him his family, just like any banana republic, that his family will continue to run the country. It'll go then to his sons and his daughter and so on and so forth, just like any dictatorship. And he can maintain that and he can just feed off the taxpayers' money just like, you know, Fernandez Marcos and all the great dictators have done. They've made themselves wealthy on the back of the government. They've used the taxpayers' money to, to uh, uh, fill their pockets. And they promised him that he will have a permanent position and that he will be able to continue to uh, uh, enlarge himself and make himself wealthier and wealthier and so on and so forth. And they promised him in effect that he could be a king. And their ultimate end is the civil war based on race. I've been preaching this people for years and years and years. I have not put it on the internet a lot because I did not want, uh, I'm just going to say it the way I feel it. I didn't want a bunch of idiots arguing with me because I know there are a bunch of morons out there and a lot of you are, are liberals and you don't want to believe what I'm saying so you'll stand there and argue with me up one side down the other. I didn't want to argue with any of you so I would share these things with our congregation locally but I didn't necessarily share them online. They want civil war based on race. They want to eliminate elderly and poor people. They want to eliminate the sick. Folks, if you think about it, this is identical to Nazism in the 1930s and 40s. They're literally wanting to repeat Nazism. When Donald Trump stole the election in 2016, and it was a stolen election, I said then, I said, watch, the Republican Party is going to engage in every possible form of genocide that they can engage in. Did I not say that? Yep. I said they will engage in every form of quote-unquote legal genocide. What do I mean by that? I mean they will take all kinds of actions that are going to cost people their lives. People who are sick people who are the most vulnerable, people who are old, those people are going to be dying by the tens of thousands. I said, watch, because of the actions the Republican Party is going to take. And they're taking these actions on purpose. Their goal is the death of tens of thousands. Now, we see how Donald Trump responded to this pandemic. And people still want to believe that he did not purposely do this. He did. The Republicans have not said one word about Donald Trump's reaction to this pandemic. Not one word. Why? Because they are fully complicit. Wake up, people. For God's sakes, wake up. My God, I'm so tired of stupidity. When are Republicans going to stand up? When are Republicans going to stand up? They're not going to stand up, people. Donald Trump is doing exactly what the Republican Party wants done. They've been wanting to do these things for decades. They finally have a man who is so amoral and ungodly and wicked to the core that he will do these things as president and he will stand behind them and he will lie and lie and lie and lie and they never had a man like this before George W. Bush was not like this George W. Bush wasn't the brightest bulb on Broadway but George W. Bush had a, a, a semblance of morality and there was, there was some decency in him he couldn't quite go along with all this and that's why they didn't do this when George W. Bush was in office, because they wanted to when George W. Bush was in office. I'm not even going to get into the whole 9-11 business and the Patriot Act and all this foolishness. That was all part of the plan. That was all part of what they're wanting to do. 
They want civil war. They want ultimately to be able to declare martial law. So for those of you people of color who are getting out of the streets and you're rioting and, and you're throwing uh, bricks through windows and setting places on fire, you are walking right into their trap. You are making conditions perfect for what they want to do. You need to keep your cool. You need to calm down. You need to approach these things with immense wisdom. Don't give me this baloney about, well, we're angry. Of course you're angry. God knows you're angry. We understand you're angry. But this is not the time to be acting out violently because all you're going to do is give Donald Trump and the Republicans the ammunition that they need to do exactly what they're wanting to do to begin with. Don't do it. Don't feed into it. Do not. You're, you're falling into their trap. They want civil war based on race. They want to be able to declare martial law. They want to suspend the Constitution with the ultimate goal of totally discarding the U.S. Constitution. That is their end game, folks, to discard the U.S. Constitution. When Donald Trump, I don't know why I'm sharing all this, it's just on me today and I can't get out of underneath it. I have a terrible burden today about all this mess. When Donald Trump came into office, I said, I kept saying, as he was running for office, I kept saying, this man is following Adolf Hitler's playbook to the letter. Everything he is doing, it's almost like he studied Hitler and how Hitler came into permanent power in Germany. And I said, this man's campaign is being entirely run by Adolf Hitler's playbook. He lies as, he tells the most ridiculous, enormous lies, and he just keeps repeating them over and over and over. He never backs down. Hitler said, constantly keep your enemy on the ropes. Constantly keep your enemy on the defensive. How do you keep your enemy on the defensive at all times? By constantly throwing out accusations. What do you accuse your enemy of? That which you are doing yourself. This is what Donald Trump has done. The, not just Trump, but the Republicans. Look at the Republicans in the Senate. Look at the Republicans in Congress. They're playing the same game he's playing, folks. They're constantly accusing Democrats, accusing liberals, accusing these, accusing those of doing the very things that they themselves are doing. I watched him run a campaign based on Adolf Hitler's playbook. The minute that I learned that according to the Electoral College vote, he, he was president I said watch we're gonna see genocide everything they could possibly do that's gonna cost human life in America anything they could possibly do that is going to uh, reduce the number of poor reduce the number of sick reduce the number of elderly reduce the number of minorities watch they're going to be engaging in every form of genocide they can possibly engage in and nobody's going to call it genocide nobody's going to call because it's going to appear to be legal you know it's going to appear to be legitimate people are dying by the tens of thousands but we just blame it on a poor response no it's not a poor response it is a calculated response they know exactly what they're doing I doubt highly that this election coming up is going to be legitimate. I doubt highly that there will be a change in government regardless of who wins. Because, as I said, when Donald Trump went into the White House, I told Tommy, I said, that man should never be allowed, my exact words, that man should never be allowed to step foot into the Oval Office. 
The minute he steps foot into the Oval Office, our democracy is ended. Why? Because at that moment, he will have far too much power. Just like Adolf Hitler when he was elected chancellor in Germany. The minute he was elected chancellor, he had too much power. He was able to do exactly what Donald Trump has done. He fed his rich friends a whole bunch of money. He gave them all kinds of tax breaks. He packed the courts with judges who would green light anything and everything he wanted to do. Why do you think the Republican Party has, in the Senate, has done nothing, absolutely nothing, of the people's business since 2016, except put judges into federal benches, hundreds of them, and extremists, People who are not even qualified to sit on the bench in a small claims court. Ideologues. Why do you think they've been doing this, people? You think, oh, it's because of abortion. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not abortion. Let me tell you a little secret. Republicans don't give a flying fig about abortion. Abortion is a manipulation issue, as is gay rights. They don't care about either one of those issues. All they care about is we can use these issues to manipulate small-minded, idiotic Christians or people who call themselves Christians who haven't the discernment in their head to see good from evil. Those are just issues they use to manipulate the religious right and to secure that voting block. That's all those issues are. That's all those issues are to Republicans. These judges are being packed into the courts not for abortion, not because of abortion, but so that as they move to secure permanent power, they have the judges all lined up to okay every single thing they do. This is exactly what Adolf Hitler did in the 30s when he became chancellor. He moved in a very calculated, cold way in order to make certain that he could secure permanent power. He knew what he was doing from the get-go. Well, I got news for you folks. There have been enough books written about Hitler and by Hitler, Mein Kempf for one, that anyone who wants to know how he did it can easily see how he did it. And he literally, Adolf Hitler literally laid out a blueprint for how you can take a democracy and turn it into a dictatorship and an oligarchy. He literally showed us how it can be done. And as Donald Trump was running for president, I said, look, this man is following Adolf Hitler's playbook. I created meme after meme after meme after meme after meme. I posted them on social media. I warned, I screamed at the top of my lungs that this is what was happening. He's in office. He has been doing from minute one exactly what Adolf Hitler did in the 30s in an effort to secure permanent power. Pastor, why are you telling us all this today? I'm telling you all this because too many of y'all are sleeping. And I've been warning for years and years and years that this foolishness was coming. And too many of you are still sleeping. Oh, don't worry, we'll vote him out in November. Honey, he has already, he's already done enough damage to our system. Look at the Attorney General that he's put in place. You think for one minute we're going to see a fair election and a fair election turnout? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. If you think for one second this election is going to go off without a hinge, a, a hitch, and the violence that is going to follow is going to be the door opening to the Civil War the Republicans have been pushing for, from day one under Donald Trump. 
We are in deep distress, people. We are in deep distress. Again, Pastor, why are you sharing all this? I'll tell you why I'm sharing all this. Because every single day, I go to the only help we really have. And the only help we really have is not the voting booth. The only help we really have is not blocking Trump's Supreme Court pick. No, the only help we have right now is sitting in heaven. And if God's people don't wake up, and if we don't start calling upon the Lord, and if we don't start interceding for our nation, and if we don't start turning to God with this matter, it's, it's over. It's over. I was praying before church for our country. And as I'm praying for our country, I literally I sat there and I said, Lord, why do I feel like I'm the only person in America who's praying this prayer? Why do I feel like I'm the only person in this country? And the Lord spoke to my spirit and said, because you are one of very few. Most people in this country think that this matter is going to be fixed in a number of conventional ways. But I've got news for you, it's not going to happen. You'd better turn to God, folks. You'd better begin to pray. If we don't get in a mind to pray this thing through, then our democracy is finished. Our republic is over. And watch what happens the minute Donald Trump steps into the White House to begin a second term. Watch what happens. You think the last four years have been hell. Honey, you don't even know what hell is. All right, that's all I want to say about that. That is prophetic. That is a warning. I'm telling you from God's mouth to your ear.